Hi everybody, it's Mindy Miller here and I am with the most phenomenal bodybuilder. This is Linda Murray. Linda Murray, how are you? I'm absolutely fabulous. Linda is an A I am so enthralled. She is an eight time champion of Miss Olympia. I think you have the longest record of winning Miss Olympia, do you not? Yes. Um, I feel like uh, as far as my, my titles, definitely the uh, most achievement and the representative of the sport today. This is her picture, if you did not know, everybody. This is Linda right here, okay? Amazing. Now, the reason I love bodybuilding is because I was a tall, skinny kid at 13. Nobody was bodybuilding. I'm now older, um, but I got into, I, I'm older, but I got into bodybuilding, but I could never reach the max that you ladies can reach. I've got, I'm very long and lean, and I don't have that shorter muscle, which is what it takes. Let me ask you, what was it that got you and that, that you wanted to do women's bodybuilding to this extent? I know, I know to that extreme. You know, it's really like amazing, just being a female athlete, and um, I kind of, bodybuilding, I believe, found me. Okay, um, were you a skinny kid by chance? No, not a skinny kid. I think for me, I was trying to be a skinny kid. I was trying to be a skinny kid. I was trying to be like a bikini competitor. And um, I just had to come to the place of understanding that um, I had a gift and my gift and my genetics fell in line with being muscular. Yes, I wanted skinny legs and uh, I was a professional cheerleader. Um, actually made the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders oh, yeah. and so I was trying to fit into that mode yeah. and it was just challenging. I had a sprinter's body, yeah. hamstrings and quadriceps and so I just finally let go and uh, went with the flow. The thing that I remember the most when I was lifting weights is the burn. I fell in love with the burn when it really hurt and then my trainers would say do five more. So when you think you can't do any more is when you have to do five more. Did you have training partners that helped you or did you do most of it on your own? You know, I had um, I had a few training partners, but I think uh, with weight training and I think with most professional athletes, for us, and I think sometimes people don't understand, it's really, we are sometimes like like to ourselves, yes, you know, so. just to stay focused. And we don't really, I don't need to hear like how good I look or all the praise. And it's, and I think that's probably the challenge after is hearing the praise because sometimes the praise makes you, well, you feel like, okay, I've arrived and you don't work as hard, so. Don't you find bodybuilding a very solitary sport? It's not like it's a group effort or you're rowing or something else. It's very singular, I found. And it, it almost puts you in like a zen kind of moment. Did you find that for yourself? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's definitely like you're living in a bubble, yeah, almost. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I felt like, um, especially for me, because I was transitioning, and I, as I said, female bodybuilding found me to let go and to, because it was so hard the must, to, to reach that level of muscularity. The discipline, you've got to have so much discipline. And didn't you also find in the discipline in bodybuilding that you had so much more discipline in life, in everyday life for everything, because you have to eat very specifically and all of that. How did that help you as a woman, as an individual, to, to change perhaps your mode of thinking and the whole discipline of just of, of living and doing this. Yeah, that was very challenging. Um, the beginning, the diet and being around bodybuilders, eating egg whites and tossing out the yolk, egg whites only, chicken breast, um, being in the gym forever, that was for me because I loved outdoor activities so that what that was definitely challenging to be in that environment and, and now I remember also I would burn out if I would be in a specific gym let's say gold or world and I mean it was a time where women were
weren't even allowed in World Gym in Venice. Um, what is your favorite training, or, or, or should I say, what is a, what is your favorite? I don't know how to put this. You're, you, do you have a regime that that you have? Built for yourself that is your favorite that you find gets the best results for you? Split routines or something else? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I think um, I always tell people when it comes to, to exercise, period, it's not who trains the hardest, but who trains the smartest. And for me, now at this place in my life, um, I it's not about the heaviest weight or the most repetitions, or if I'm like sweating, or if I'm on the cardio machine and I'm burning a thousand, twenty thousand calories. It's just about really feeling good. You know, it's really about feeling good and consistency. Now, let me ask you, where do you see your future taking this and what you've accomplished? Do you have a concept of where you want to move towards now? Yes, I do. Um, I'm like, I'm in that phase right now with the importance of weight training for women and really trying to get that message across that weight training does not mean that you are going to be a bodybuilder or but bodybuilding we all bodybuild and I want to get that that message across because I think that I know that even with some eating habits that may be not perfect but if you really understand the importance of weight training and understanding the difference between that and cardio activity and not you'll make a really a major uh, difference in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Murray, and I want to look at this incredible body. This was shot by Mr. Bill Dobbins right over here. Come on in, Bill. This was shot by Bill Dobbins and Linda, and he does, as I said before in our interview with Bill, the most incredible photography, muscle and fitness, shape, Flex Magazine, anything you can think of, this is the man who's done it all, and Linda has pioneered it. Eight times champion, Miss Olympia, ladies and gentlemen.